wants to check that out. So, Chris, you are a prolific guy on social media. You're, you're always talking about the games you get to play or things that you're working on. So I always like following that. And some of the games you talked about recently, I thought maybe we could uh, talk about some of your recent plays. Yeah, sure. That's what we're here for. Right? One of the games that uh, that intrigued me and I finally got a chance to play it was one, and they've got a Kickstarter out right now, in fact, starting today, um, Sorcerer City. But Druid City Games published a game called The Grim Forest. Yeah. Have you seen that one? Have you seen that yet? I played it. Oh, you played it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this is the this is the gumbo group right here, uh, testing it out for the first time uh, at our little gumbo night. Is it your game or one of your friends' games? That's the uh, Bradley's game. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, the reason why I ask is because uh, I can't. It's rare whenever you get that kind of satisfaction from just opening up a game. Oh. When, you, when I open up that game and saw all the pieces, how the insert was put together. I mean, the production's through the roof. I mean, if you, uh, yeah, look at those images. I mean, that's. That's insane, right? I mean, it's wonderful. I was really happy with the artwork. Uh, in fact, uh, just from you know professional standpoint, uh, those little boards, like that green board that's right there, fits perfectly into the insert. And then the other boards fit on top of it, and it all just works perfectly. I was just, I, I on a professional level, I was looking at it thinking, this is awesome art direction. But but are we bedazzled a little bit by the production in this game? Let's talk about the game itself. What do you okay. think? Okay, okay. So uh, the game itself, solid. I mean, uh, I, I don't have any problem with the game. Um, but I think the direction you're going is, is it overproduced? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I mean, the, the thing is, is when I, whenever I was looking at the Kickstarter, I knew what the game was like. Um, uh, you know, because they did a great job of showing you how you play it and stuff. Sure. And I even thought at the time, like, well, from the game description and the rules and stuff, it doesn't look like you need minis. It doesn't look like you need all this stuff. But it was just hard to turn down, obviously. <laughs> and oh. if, you know, if you like this kind of production and stuff and all like I do, um, it is hard to turn down. I mean, could it be a card game just in a small box like that? Yeah, it could be. But um, I think Druid City, I mean, I've, I've heard James say this before that, uh, you know, they, they want to make beautiful, great production games, you know. So I don't think it was a, like, it, it, had I not paid attention to the Kickstarter and I opened it up and then played the game and not realized that it was going to be a, like a pretty quick, fast, and even kind of a little cutthroat game. It uh, is. Yeah. Um, had I not done that, I think I would have been, I, my expectations for the level of gameplay because of how good the production is would have been off centered, but I, I was prepared for it. So, uh, but I have heard people say, no, <laughs> enthusiasm doesn't hurt either now. Yeah. Um, Jeremy says, Hey, James, enthusiasm doesn't hurt. And he completely, completely agrees with the production, with your notes. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think even uh, Tom Vassell was talking about how it's one of the best produced or artwork. Uh, stuff there. So, yeah, I mean, you can't disagree. That the only thing I've seen people say is that it might be the production doesn't go with uh, the level of gameplay, which you know, it, like I said, I I think they were pretty honest on what the game was. So, it didn't bother me. I, you know, to give you my thoughts, I actually liked the game. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was yeah. very cutthroat. I don't mind those kind of games. We played a uh, tournament of Camel Camelot. Um, I played it once, but uh, the the game group played it all night the other night. Literally, it stayed on the table all night. So wow. we don't mind we don't mind take that games. And that one has that level. And and I, there was a thrill whenever things like and I don't remember all the monsters, but I think one of them was the dragon and the and the werewolf and things like that. And when they came out and these big beautiful minis just plopped out in the middle of all the cards, I gotta admit there was a visceral thrill in seeing that stuff. Yeah. There, there was an addition. But when you when you at the end of the game, and I started thinking about how the gameplay really was, it wasn't much more than your typical small box card game, right? Yeah, I think uh, I think what they could have done actually they could have had a simple game and then a deluxe version. And what they probably ended up doing was just go, ah, we don't want to make a simple game. Let's just make the deluxe version. And that's pretty much what everybody got, right? But, yeah, everybody got a deluxe version when you think about it. And and again. I love beautiful games. I, I love having games that look awesome on the table. Hey, in some ways, Asking for Troubles, really well-produced game. Even in the in the version that Breaking Games had, 
I, I don't mind these big, giant, thick cardboard tokens. I mean, they're not little cheap stuff. These are really right. thick punch board that you guys gave us. You right. Know? And the plastic ship, I mean, there's 28 plastic ships in there. You don't need plastic ships. You could have used tokens, you know. So there's always a level of how good can we make this game? You know, you know, how much can we produce this game until people will think it's too much? So, Yeah, so I'm, I'm not complaining. And I actually, based on the production that came out, I'm excited to see what other games James and Derek and the rest of the team have. This one, no one's big, right? Yeah, yeah. That one, I, I don't know. That As much as I liked the gameplay in Grim Forest, I didn't see much of, of what uh, excited me yet on Sorcerer City. Maybe I, maybe I need to look at it again, but it just didn't really jump off the page for me. I just got home, so I haven't had a chance to look at okay. it yet. I mean, I definitely will look at it because it's Druid City. I already know the production is going to be off the chart. Um, and James is a solid gamer, so I'll, I'll see what it's like. It all depends. A lot of it now, I used to kickstart all the time. You know, I got way too many games now. But a lot of it depends on if I think I could get my game group to play it. And my game group's very particular. <laughs> Sometimes I pass on games I think I'd want. But just like Batman, I pass on Batman other than the price point. But um, I just know I'd probably get it played once, maybe twice at my group. And then... That's tough to justify 200 bucks, man. 140 bucks just to get in. And if you really want everything. If I get one of those games, I get it all. And oh, wow. Like you're, in for, you're in for the whole thing, 340, 400. Yeah. And being an extremist that way, it makes me say yes or no whenever I really need it. <laughs> hey, Jer Jeremy has a good point here. Jeremy says, I think that when you see Grim Forest, you definitely want to see their other games. And maybe that's the goal. Yeah. Not, not bad. I kind of following up with one you said.